Hey, it's Alex here from Serbos, and I'm very pleased to show you some of the new features we've just released as part of the playground inside of Serbos Hub. We've really been focusing on making sure the onboarding and getting started the experience is as slick as possible. We've added a couple of new features, which really get you up and running faster with a real policy that matches your use case. And then also as a developer, enable you to really interact with how that playground is working and seeing how the API uh, integrates with side of your application. So let's take a quick look. So starting off inside of your Service Hub account, uh, when you have a new organization, you can go and create a new playground. One of the first capabilities we've now added is the ability to create a playground from a simple RBAC policy. Um, rather than have to go into like a blank slate or use one of our templates, you can actually go through a wizard which goes and asks you some questions and prompts around what kind of roles, what kind of resources you have inside of your system will actually go and generate a starting point policy for you. So I'm going to pretend I'm building like a finance system. So I'm going to have a user, I'm going to have an admin, and I'm going to have a manager inside of here as my different roles. And then in terms of the different resources inside of my system, we're going to have a purchase order, we're going to have an invoice, and we're going to have an expense. And so for each of these, we can have different actions. So we're going to start with a purchase order. So who can create a purchase? Actions are create, read, delete, approve, let's say. Um, for an invoice, I want to read, uh, forward an invoice to a different user, um, update and delete. And then for an expense, I want to create, read, approve, and deny. And so now we've got our different uh, resource types inside of our system, what those different actions are. I'm gonna go on and the next step, which is now we get our nice permission matrix. So in here I can define different actions. So I want my admin firstly to be able to do everything. So I'm gonna give the admin that permission for everything going on. I want a user, I want them to be able to create, read, and I want them to read an invoice, I want them to update an invoice. I want them to be able to create an expense, read an expense, but they can't approve and deny. And then I want a manager to do the same thing, but also do the approve actions for each of these. So read, allow them to forward. Um, also going to allow them to delete in this case. And then for an expense, I want them to create, read, approve, and deny. Go through that, and that is going to go and bring us into Playground. And inside of here, once it loads up, we're going to have a new set of policy. So inside of this Playground, we've created our uh, policy, and we can see here that it's gone through and structured out kind of the basic role-based access control, the RBAC policy. So each of our uh, resource types, here's the purchase order, here's an expense, here's an a, a invoice. We have the different actions, which roles can do it, and then whether that should be allowed or denied. We've also gone and created the test cases. So as part of the process, we take those examples uh, that you've given during the uh, wizard, and we've created all the test cases for the different resource types. Um, and we've also generated example principles and resources for each of them. So we create some generic names here, um, but then you can start expanding on these. And this is really where you can get started. Um, I could start going around with changing these rules. This is a live playground. We're now actually going to get some feedback. We can see that our test results have now failed. So there's a couple of test cases which are now failing because I've changed this policy. So it's that real-time uh, feedback piece. You can see exactly what is going on and, and what's uh, <laughs> what your business logic is. Now, this is a basic RBAC policy. Um, in most cases, you'll need to go into attribute-based access control, and but you can then start using the playground to start adding in those conditions uh, where you start need to maybe go and add some further rules where you want to look at individual attributes um, of the resource or the principal making the request. So you can, you can expect inspect any one of these elements uh, from the request coming in and then make a more fine-grained permission. So that's feature number one, which is the raw base access control policy generator. Next up is if you wanted to actually see how this integration works with your application, I'm going to switch over to another environment that has a different policy in it. This one's got some conditions in, so you can imagine a bit more uh, developed. We have this new tab on the right called Implement, and this is going to show you, uh, firstly allow you to see what the API between your application and your policy decision point would need to be. And we support being able to see both the check resource and the plan resources for the different use case. So check resource is a simple check to see whether an action should be allowed or denied. Uh, inside of this interface, you can define uh, which principle, which resource, and which action from your test fixtures you want to see, um, if there's any auxiliary data as well. And then on the left, you have the payload request coming from what your application would send. And on the right is what comes back from the policy decision point, the Serbos PDP, um, with that authorization decision. So in this case, it's an allow. Uh, if I go over to a different action, so I'm going to clear my actions up here. 
I'm going to go and, oh, my loom is in the way, apologies. But I'm going to say for the approve action, um, this action is currently allowed. If I go to a different user, this action is now actually going to be denied. So we can actually see for different users, for different resources, for different principles, we can see what that message that goes between your application and the PDP would be. Obviously, our SDKs make it much easier to work with this, but if you wanted to see what the underlying uh, details are, um, this UI gives you uh, insight into that. Where it's actually more useful is around with a query plan. So Serbos has the ability to generate a set of query criteria for a principle, an action, and a resource kind. And this is where the data structure is actually quite important because it defines what the conditions will be for your application. So I'm going to go and look at a particular user here. Um, let's use a Derek. I'm trying to view an expense resource type. And my policy says that this user Derek should always be able to uh, view a expense resource. So the response that comes back from the PDP and the query plan isn't always allowed. So now if I go over to a user that uh, has some conditions, what we can see now is what that AST, what the abstract syntax tree of conditions is, that's coming back. So here we have a conditional response. So for Sally to view an expense, the owner ID attribute of the resource must be equal to Sally in this case, so the ID of the principal uh, making the individual request. So this view is really great for really getting your mental model right around how uh, query plans work inside of Serbos and your application, and also great for kind of debugging. And you can pull in principles or resources into the side of your playground and actually see what those conditions would be. And these can get very expressive and very detailed. And this view gives you ability to uh, work directly on that. And you can go and dynamically change these values and, and get different responses um, as you start tweaking and tuning things. So then the final piece we released is what we're calling the ability to connect a playground uh, to a PDP, or connect a PDP to a playground. So, <coughs> apologies. Um, so you've been working through, you've got your policy as you want, and you want to quickly test it out with your local application without having to go through the process of storing your policies in a repo and connecting it to a server's uh, workspace. With the connect PDP system, we, you, you, what you can do is actually start a local policy decision point as a docking container or just a binary running your local machine and create a live connection back to the playground that's here in your browser. And as you start making changes to your policies, that, that update will get streamed down and your local PDP will then update. And to do this, you have to go and create some uh, client, client credentials. I've already done this uh, before I made this video. Uh, and then we give you a command to go and run. And essentially we're saying go and load playground, the playground ID, and then start the server. So here I already got this server's binary running on my local machine, but equally I could go and um, run a docking container passing through my client ID and client secret as, envi as environment variables um, of using MPX as well. So to give you an idea what this sort of looks like in action, um, I'm going to start my PDP. I'm connecting it to the playground in the background. Um, that window is there. So we've, we've already loaded a, a set of policies. Uh, this is kind of some debugging information. Um, but if I were to then go and change my policy, uh, we'll see in a couple of seconds, there we go, that policy update has now been pushed down. And so my local application could be talking to this local PDP and getting that real-time feedback as I start changing my policies. I can see how my application responds also. So I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you find these improvements, uh, a, a optimization to your workflow, both for getting started with your initial policy with the RBAC generator, going on and enable you to see what those API calls and requests between your playground, uh, sorry, from your application, your PDP through those try the API uh, interfaces, and then finally be able to quickly get up and running with a local policy decision point with a live connection back to your playground, enable you to really iterate and evolve quickly on the application uh, code and integrations along with your policy uh, before shipping and combining it into an actual production workspace to be fully managed by the Service Hub CI CD pipeline. As always, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, join our Slack community, uh, send us submissions on GitHub, um, and get in touch. We'd love to hear uh, what you're working on and how Service uh, can be made easier for you. Thanks.